probably hear that country music in the background. Pop on here and do a relatively quick... We gotta work with it because I, I can't film this the rest of the weekend, so it's just gonna have to work. Today, I thought I would pop on here and do a relatively quick video. Um, posting videos as frequently, lady. So if you have any ideas for videos, be sure to comment them down in the description. Let's start again. Hey everybody, CR Media Gal here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would pop on here and do a relatively quick, hopefully, video on hair care and how I maintain my rather crazy hair colors. If you've been following me at all for some time, you will notice that I do frequently change up the color of my hair. And I love experimenting, so yeah, I thought I would just show you some of my tips and tricks for how I maintain healthy hair. And um, also, I do have other content planned for this channel, but a lot of the videos that I want to do take a lot of prep work and some of them some research, so like I really have not had the time to sitting down and doing those videos, so that's why my filming schedule is a bit off. So if you have any ideas for videos, be sure to comment them down below. I'd really appreciate it. Again, I want to sit down and create those videos. I just haven't had the time. But this is something I thought I could cover relatively quickly. And I thought some of you might be interested since some people have been commenting on my hair. Disclaimer, this is just what works for me. You do you. Doesn't mean you have to follow any of my advice because everybody's hair texture is different. Everybody's natural hair color is different. So it's always going to take the color very differently from person to person. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but I still thought it might be a helpful video to somebody out there who is interested in coloring their hair like I have. So if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Sierra Media Gal, also known as Andrea in the fandom and fan fiction world. I do a lot of different content on this channel, some fandom, some lifestyle, some fashion. So if that interests you at all, be sure to click the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I would really appreciate it. Hopefully this information is useful to you. So yeah, let's jump right in. So as you can see, I have changed up my hair once again. Light is picking it up as really kind of a deep purple, but it's more of a purple slash blue. It's actually called denim wash. And then at my tips, I did uh, coral. But my natural hair color is like a dirtyish blonde. So you can also see some of my dirty blonde coming through where the denim wash is too light of a color to pick up on. As far as hair color brands, the one that I will always recommend if you want to do it yourself, and I've used it on myself as well, so I can vouch for it, is Arctic Fox. They are a vegan based hair company and their products are relatively inexpensive. You also get a really good conditioning with Arctic Fox hair colors and I think they last well. I don't know a lot of people that have had a lot of issues with Arctic Fox colors staying pretty well. So I, I swear by Arctic Fox. There are of course a lot of different hair color brands that you can purchase from, but I stick to what I like and I've always had good experiences with Arctic Fox. So that would be my choice. I have to tell you that while I do sometimes color my own hair and I have since kind of mastered <laughs> the technique for doing it myself, my hair color tends to turn out patchy back in my head for obvious reasons that I have a tough time reaching back there. I have a shoulder injury too, so that kind of makes it difficult as well. I do tend to more often than not get my hair professionally colored. Now a lot of you will probably say, well, that's a lot more expensive. Yes, it is. But I have some tips for how to do that financially affordably if you're not doing it as frequently as say you probably should. It's mainly just for hair trims and hair color that I pay for. So to start with, I do have highlights in my hair. I do not use bleach. There's a lot of professional YouTubers out there that bleach their own head and kudos to them. I do not trust myself. That is not something I would ever be able to do on my own. That's just been a personal choice. So that's why a lot of the colors that 
I use are not as vibrant as they would be if I bleached my whole head. <laughs> if you're looking for tips on that, I am not your girl for that. I would always recommend, especially if you're gonna bleach your whole head to have it done by a professional, you risk a lot less breakage and damage to your hair if you have a professional do it. Just saying. And I have never bleached my head, though I am starting to seriously consider it doing that in the future, but I will have my hairdresser do it, not me. I do have highlights in my hair though, so that I can do some more vibrant and pastel colors, because otherwise the less chance it has of showing up in dirty blonde to dark hair, it's, it's just not gonna take to your hair at all. So at least with some of these blonde highlights, I can do corals and I can do pinks and I can do light purples. So I do have highlights and I do tend to let them go down to about half my hair length before I touch them up. So that's one way that I do save some money is by not getting my roots done every time I go to the hair salon. So I do save a lot of money that way. I also keep my hair appointments to every seven to eight weeks. Normally, especially for shorter hair, you know, they will recommend that you go about every four to five weeks. I extend it to double that basically. So that's another way that I do save some money and a lot of times in between if the color is really fading out depending on what color I've done I will touch it up myself. But I trust my hairstylist to not make it patchy and make it look much better than I can on my own. That's just how I make it work financially for myself while still having it look its best. That's the trade-off. As far as keeping the hair color and maintaining it on my own, first and foremost, if you want the color to last as long as possible, do not wash your hair. You have to wash it as infrequently as possible. If you can extend it to a week or even more, good for you. I wash my hair generally twice a week. Can't tend to go more than four or five days before it just, it's looking like, it's looking rough. My scalp gets very, very oily very quickly within I'd say 24 hours so I rely on dry shampoo so I in between use this Batiste dry shampoo I know there's better uh, dry shampoos out there that are of course more expensive but this is about seven to eight dollars depending on where you buy it at you can find it at your local CVS Walmart Target you name it and pick this up yeah this works very well for me and allows me to go at least four or five days without having to wash my hair the second major tip for maintaining the hair color is to wash your hair in lukewarm to as cold of water temperature as you can tolerate I always am taking lukewarm showers it sucks but that's how you keep the color as far as shampoo and condition products I have been using for about a year this OGX Fade Define Orchid Oil Shampoo and Conditioner. I did actually show this in a favorites about a year ago now. I think it was last summer. And I can definitely swear by this, at least for me. This really does help the color from fading as quickly as it would otherwise. It has UVA and UVB sun filter protection as well which is always helpful. And it is sulfate free, which is another extremely important method for treating colored hair and keeping it from fading too quickly is to use a sulfate free shampoo and conditioner, whether it's this stuff OGX that I'm recommending or something else, make sure that you get a sulfate free shampoo and conditioner because that will go very far. Thirdly is to not, as much as possible, use any kind of heat products on your hair, whether it's a blow dryer, flat iron, or a curling iron. I stay away from those as much as possible. Obviously, I just freshly had my hair done today, so it was styled by my hairstylist. But normally, I, I would not curl my hair too often. I do like that look, so when I do want to curl my hair, I use a heat protectant spray. So, for instance, I have this L'Oreal Paris Blow Dry Quick Dry Primer Spray. And I do love this stuff. I put this on when I first get out of the shower, let it sink in, and then I will dry my hair with a blow dryer and then curl it. But otherwise, 99% of the time, I don't blow dry my hair at all. I just let it naturally dry. That's the easiest and safest way to keep the hair color from fading faster because heat products will definitely damage and help the fading process go more quickly. As far as styling products, I'm very basic 
And the one product that I do use, and it is relatively expensive, but a little goes a long way, so it lasts me for a good seven to nine months at a time, is this Living Proof Perfect Hair Day 5-in-1 Styling Treatment. So this smooths my hair, it gives it volume and texture, it also strengthens it, so my hair always feels silky smooth after I put this stuff in my hair. I do swear by this. But there, you know, there are a number of different hair products you can use that will be safe on colored hair. Like I said, it's it's on the pricier side. So if you can find it on maybe Amazon or eBay, that's probably where you're gonna find the best price for it. And again, a little bit goes a long way. I've had this bottle for about seven months now and I'm maybe a little more than halfway through it. So I only need a little bit. My last tip for protecting colored hair would be to stay out of the sun too, as much as possible. I clearly, as you can tell, yeah, I'm a very pale girl. I do stay out of the sun quite a bit. So that's not an issue for me, but if you're a sun loving person, I'm sorry. Like the sun is going to fade your hair just as dousing it in hot water when you're in the shower or going in a chlorinated pool that will absolutely take the color out of your hair or going in the ocean. Those are guaranteed ways to make the process of fading your hair a lot quicker. So if you can avoid those things, you'll be okay. So again, those were just my quick tips and tricks for how I color my hair and how I maintain it. I hope you found it useful. This is just my method for treating my hair. Um, but there are so many different avenues for going about what works for you. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It supports my channel. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below and let me know what the craziest color is that you've done in you, on your head. I think mine was, I did a very vibrant blue. It was probably over a year ago. And I think that was like the first major video I did on this channel of myself. It, it was my get to know me. And that blue was really vibrant and that stayed in my hair for probably a good six or seven months. Yeah, so that was probably the most, the boldest hair color that I've done. I tend to now stick to purples and warmer toned colors just because I like those with my skin tone better. But I, I did love that blue. I've thought about going back to blue. So that's, that's probably mine. But what are yours? I'd be curious to know down in the comments. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know what videos you'd like to see on this channel. Because I would like to start uploading more regularly. I'm sorry. It's just been really tough lately. It's been very, very busy. All right, guys. I will see you guys again next time. Bye. Oh, my gosh. I have to pee so bad. Um... All the stuff away. Ooh. And go mulch. See, I can never curl my hair this good. Not this better. Used consignment. Love it. I'm obsessed with floral. Tanya, I'm, I've, I've become obsessed with floral. I've actually had my hairstylist like show me how to do this, and then I go and do it, and it looks like.